ready. Hello? Okay. Hello. Good evening. My name is Alyssa and welcome to the Arizona Deliverance Center. I'm going to start with some announcements before we get started. Um, on September 12th, um, every Tuesday at 6.30, we have Julie's Miracle Listen Support Group. Um, that's in person, right? Yes. Yeah, okay, it's here at the center every Tuesday at 6.30. Julie's next seminar for spiritual recovery, the Women's Conference, is going to be is there January 20th. And then we have the weekly Zoom on Wednesdays, Rick Zoom, every Wednesday at 6 p.m. Um, if you want the link, just email Steps of Deliverance. Um, we also have some offering boxes on the back if you feel led to give to the ministry. And I want to say a quick prayer before we get started. Um, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, Lord. Thank you for this night and all the people that you've brought here today, Lord. We just thank you for everyone that's going to be delivered and healed. And we thank you, Holy Spirit, that you're going to have your way. Um, we just thank you, Father, for all the people that are going to come to the Lord or receive deliverance, receive healing, and that your will is going to be done. Thank you for touching every heart in this place tonight, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. job. What's happening, Donald? Good to see you. Welcome, everybody. If you leave this one, if you leave with one thing, the one thing that's going to help you, keep following Jesus. You'll, you'll get delivered. You, you have to get delivered when you follow Jesus. And then you know for sure what's hindering you if you can't follow Jesus. And I'm not just talking, you already got saved. This is for born-again believers. Deliverance is the children's bread. God brought you here as a child of God so you could receive the sustenance from the Father so you could be set at liberty. But if you can't do what the Bible tells you to do, you can't have a sound mind, you can't receive peace, you can't walk in power, then you know it's spirits. You can't be delivered because we have the anointing to do deliverance. Every believer has the anointing to do deliverance. The anointing just goes into operation because I've done it and because I've been through it. If you've been through it, then you can help someone go through it. But deliverance isn't just your crutch so that you can go around and do whatever you want to do, think whatever you want to think, be spiritually lazy, and then come here and cast out spirits and feel good again. The devil will use deliverance like a high. And then when it gets so bad, the porn addicts sleep with hookers. Now they come. Oh, it's bad, Brother Rick. Man, I'm, I'm risking my life now. Picking up fentanyl addicts on the street. Well, dude, you're a born-again believer. You, you, you couldn't see this as demons. You couldn't see that's where it's going to go. Christians don't have power to navigate sin. They have power over sin. Once you're operating in sin... It's going to sway you and take you and entangle you and snare you, bind you up and pull you down. The ultimate depth is hell. So, so we got to follow the Lord. And then when you can't follow the Lord, you, you got to go to the childlike faith. You got to go to the basics. What, what, what am I missing? I'm lacking a lack of empathy. I'm lacking some love. I'm lacking compassion. I'm lacking discipline. I'm lacking some basic understanding. I I'm lacking the power just to walk this out. But the devil's so smart. Oh, he'll use information. He's using the information highway against people. The hardest people to get delivered are people that's called a bunch of quacks online, especially when you pay the money to get delivered. That's your red flag. I mean, there's, there's, you know, a, a workman's worthy of his wages. I choose to go to work and sweat with my own brow, and I need a break from deliverance. I can't deal with someone who wants to beat his face in all day long. Oh, dear, I got to go and swing some hammers and get back to someone just grateful to make 800 bucks so he can feed his family and stay in some crappy apartment. And a gratefulness comes back. Like, oh, my goodness. Grateful just to eat food? Grateful just to pay the bills? Grateful just to see your future generation and your kids are only five and eight years old to do better than you? Having that much gratefulness? And they're not even saved. I said, oh, man, I got these, these, these ungrateful Christians can tax you. They can tax you. And why? Because they're watching the information superhighway. I need a dopamine hit. 
who, who, where, 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 click, scroll. Oh, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. I, I, that's kind of good. Can we get another one? You, you got to go down to the root system of truth. Oh, I, I'll show it to you. You think, I'm, you think it's that complicated? You, okay, here it is. Matthew chapter 7, verse 7. Judge not that you not be judged. Oh, uh, I'm a born-again Christian. Judgment can't come upon me. I'm born again. I'm, my name is in the book of life. I'm a king's kid. God wants me to be rich. And I give money to Ken Copeland. That black hair dye that he says ain't black hair dye, uh, I paid for some of that. No, 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 no. You do this and you suffer this. this. No one's exempt from the word of God. This is for the children. This isn't, he doesn't preach to the outsiders. Preaching to the outsiders was come as you are. I love you. I want to help you. I judge you at the cross of Calvary. I pronounce my innocent, innocent son guilty. He died in your place. He did what you couldn't do for yourself. He did it for you. I came down and did it. And the blood was shed so that you could be right before me and so we could have a relationship. But here's how the relationships work. Here's how the relationships work in my life. Uh, chip, 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 chip. Oh, oh, oh she, she's cute, but my goodness, I can't. Oh, sorry, girl. <laughs> I got to let you go. Uh, in my house, there's order, okay? There's order. And I, and I surrounded myself. I married someone that was my, my type of mindset. Oh, yeah, when you're first picking and operating by the flesh, you're, you, you're picking them by the cuteness of their smile and the figure. But then when you start thinking about living with them for the rest of your life, you're like, hey, man, I, had, I wasn't built to be ran by no chick. I, I, no disrespect to women. And I had to grow in godliness that you know, a man has to love his wife as Christ loves the church. Oh, that's an infinite continuing to grow in the knowledge of how to love your family, to love your wife, to see her grow, to see her prosper. But if someone doesn't submit and listen, oh, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it because that's God's way. That was imputed into my mind. I, I, I'm from farmers. Men did men things and women did women things. I never saw in my life growing up in Nebraska in the 70s and 80s, I never saw a woman bickering at a man ever. Now, I wasn't around a bunch of dads who were drunks and pot smokers and porn watchers. I mean, it's the Bible Belt of America. There was a church on every few blocks. People are basically, everyone believed in God. I, I was, a, I had been a gambler and drugs and I, the first person I met was 19 that didn't believe in God. And I sat there, come on, man, you're playing games. You're trying to put this rebellion a little too far now, don't you think? No, I don't believe in God. I said, well, how do we get here? He goes, yeah, these, you know, something in space. And I said, dude, you come on, man. I mean, I'm smoking pot, so, you know, I'm not in my right mind, but it's, it's almost comical. You believe there's no God? The Bible says a fool has to teach himself to believe that. Nobody can believe there is no God. We're made in the image of God. That's why God hates idols. So you don't go to churches with idols, with Jesus on crosses and, and Marys and start doing beads. That's Babylon. You can't follow Christ, the living God, and worship idols and talk to idols. Oh, this is just symbolic. There's no symbology. God said, I hate idols. I have nothing to do with an idol. He said, burn them, cast them down, root them out, throw them out. Paul said, we know an idol is nothing, but what's behind the idol are demons. Oh, even at a so-called some church... So they got Bible, and they got some extra stuff, and then they got this, this. Oh, come on now. You, you, you can't be delivered in that. That's why when you watch a deliverance that's symbolic and similar to a Catholic exorcism, you know it's wrong. That looks just like the voodoo high priest. You ever seen a voodoo high priest do deliverance? It's very similar to a Catholic that does deliverance. It's, it's, it's exchanging. There's power. There's power. I was watching this lady. She's powerful in the word. She worked with this person, this doctor down in Mexico, worked in high-powered witchcraft. Real doctors would come. He worked with a bottle of alcohol and a rusty knife, and he'd cut cataracts off someone's eyes. He'd go in, and, and he'd remove a, a, a spine. This lady said, I held the body open. I held it open. He'd take out a spine. You can't even do that. The, the spinal cord runs through that one of the... One of the uh, C4, C5, and he hammered in one from a dead body. There's, there's power in witchcraft. There's power in Todd Bentley working in his witchcraft. Uh, you know, tattooing, leaving his wife, acting nuts, all rambunctious, working with familiar spirits. All kinds of voodoo high priests got gold dust coming down on people's brow. These things aren't God. 
These things aren't God. They'll make you feel good. ACDC made me feel like there was God. I mean, I, I was ready to fight you, and at that point, at 14, I believe I could beat up a man. Uh, it made you feel power. There's power in things. Just because there's power in things doesn't mean it's God. It's a God to somebody, but there's one way to the Father. There's not one way ish. There's one way to the Father, and it's through the Son, Jesus Christ. And so when Jesus Christ comes, he comes to restore the relationship. A man was meant to walk with God. A man was meant to be the head of his household. The wife was meant to be submissive over to her husband. Now, I know you can't submit to a knucklehead that's living in full-blown sin. You're on self-survival mode. You're in now mode, playing a role you weren't designed to play, being a father and a mother and a guide to the children. It, it, you got to do what you got to do. But the reality, when Christ comes, there has to be order. He comes to set things in order. God does everything decently and in order. If it's not decent and it's not in order, a sinner can see it ain't right. A sinner can see it ain't right. But Christians are receiving these end-time delusions. It's delusions. In the end time, Satan's going to have this power to deceive even the elect. The Antichrist is going to be getting so many healed, you, you ain't going to believe it. He's going to clear out hospitals. And you're going to tell them about Jesus, and they're going to say, where's your Jesus? This man just cleared that hospital. Look at these good works. This is God. He's going to deceive even the elect if it was possible. Why isn't it possible? Because the elect know God's word is the truth. The elect will always be led by the Holy Spirit to the word of God to, to put a pump of brake, pump your brakes, to give a check in your spirit, to double look at this thing, to take your time. We, we, we're not supposed to be followers of man. It says you're supposed to give respect to where respect is due. You're supposed to give honor where honor is due, but you're not supposed to be waiting for some man to guide you and take you. Now, Paul said, hey, he was telling the young church, hey, come follow me as I follow Christ. Just do what I do. Get this thing going. And once it gets going, you learn the basics. You learn how it works. You learn how I operate. You want what I operate. You want some peace, joy. You want some perseverance to go through some trials and difficulties and be able to keep going. And then at one point, it's going to run on its own. But follow me until you get to that point. You, you, if you want abuse, then you get abuse. If, if you want demons, you get demons. And if you don't want demons, then you got to fight. You got to fight what? To do what God tells you to do. You're supposed to be a light of the world. A city set on a hill can't be hidden. You're not supposed to be hidden. You're not supposed to be moping and complaining. You're not supposed to be struggling uh, with every kind of problem there is known to man. We have problems and we have tribulations and we have trials. These things aren't there to harm you but to test you, to try you so God can take you to another level. But, but you're not supposed to just be taking a beating. There's no benefit in a mental beating. There's no benefit in you going through sexual immorality. There's no benefit in you being addicted to drugs and alcohol. There's no benefit in you toying around with witchcraft and sorcery. There is only harm, pain, and punishment. So he says here, you want to be blessed? Judge not that you wouldn't be judged. I guarantee you, you people that have a problem with forgiveness, your dad molested you, he fondled you. Yeah, that sucks. But you were five, now you're 50. Okay, now you're a blood-bought child of the living God. That old man died anyway, and now you've got a new creation we're looking at. So you need to operate like a new creation, not like an old, wounded, beat-down, crying baby when you had no power, no source of hope, and no strength. You had no vision of the future. So judge not least you be judged, for with the judgment you judge, you'll be judged. Who's going to do it? Well, the demons are going to do it for sure. They're, gonna, they're the accuser of the brethren. They're going to tell... They're going to tell God what you've been doing, how you've been acting, and what you've been saying, and the way you've been treating people, and the things you're not doing when God tells you to do them. He said, with the measure you use, it'll be measured right back to you. He says, why do you look at the speck of your brother's eye? I, I, I can't change. I can't change some people. I can't change Hollywood, so I don't watch Hollywood. I don't deal with that frustrations. I know that was, it came in nice. Man, you you want to watch some good TV? Go watch some 70s TV. Go watch Leave it to Beaver. Go watch Andy Griffin. Uh, go watch Little House on the Prairie. Uh, you, you'll, you'll get some moral to the story. You, 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 you'll get a little proverb in this type. But that's what they had to give you at the beginning to get everybody hooked. Now mom and dad are away, and now they're going to give you Disney. Now you're going to give a right from the Childhood Molestation Express right on down in the television, and 
it's going to come home to roost. And that's why America has a phenomenon with witchcraft. Oh, it's spiritual. Yeah, the devil's got all kinds of spirits. People didn't worry. They didn't, the Jews didn't offer their children to the god Moloch and offer them in the fire for no reason. That guy was able to send some rains. He was able to give some crops, give some peace between some, some neighboring uh, villages that were about to go to war with you. You were getting something for what he wanted. He wanted your soul. He wanted your heart. He wanted your destiny. He wanted that land. He wanted to pass it down to generation to generation. So, yeah, he'll give you something good for a moment. Witchcraft will give you something good for a moment, and then he's going to make you pay. And you're going to find a voice in your head and going, well, I was just playing with crystals. Well, I was just doing a seance. I was just trying to intrigue myself with Bloody Mary. I was just trying to do, I, I had these guys, but I, 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 was, I played football with one of them, another one of them. I knew for, for years, and they met an older woman for, for intimacy, some, some woman that was in her 40s, at least 30s. They were, they were 19. They called her the mistress of the dark. She would turn the lights out, and she could levitate them. She could levitate them off the bed. They thought it was intriguing. I, don't know, I didn't know much about Christ. I knew we didn't come from no monkeys. I knew there's good and evil, and that was evil. Therefore, I had enough trouble. I didn't want to go look for more. And they thought it was interesting. You know what the second interesting person they had? Oh, they thought they were slick. But they had a partner at work that was from New York that used to be a roadie for a lot of famous rock and roll bands. And they thought they had this person for relations. And the dude explained to him it was a, it was a she-male. It was a she-male. Oh, this, they, they, these were not common. These things are run-of-the-mill now. They got them working all over uh, Whole Foods. It's like I, it, you, you get hired on the spot, I think, if you're, you're transitioning like a 240-pound man trying to whittle down into some sort of creation that looks feminine. You get hired. Moving, shopping, car. I eat there every day. Uh, they, they, it got them. Oh, the embarrassment, the laughter over beers. It didn't stop for these guys. Oh, the devil makes you pay. He'll give you embarrassment. These are sinners. He's already got them, and it's not enough for them. He wants them still to suffer. He still wants them to be mocked. He still wants them to be ridiculed. He wants them still to be demoralized. Why? Because he wants you to give up completely. He wants everyone to completely give up, whether you're a Christian or whether you're a sinner. Once you give up, he's got you. Your hook, line, and sinker. He'll come on you so hard that, that you won't believe it. People have turned on this ministry. They, they, Mike gets the best of them. I, I only get the halfway turning on the ministries. Uh, Mike gets the, all the good ones that really hate our guts. And, and what happens? They gave up, and something comes down that road of deception. And that thing that comes down from the road of deception begins to hate everything that's truly God. It begins to burn every bridge of any possibility of them ever returning back to Christ or ever returning back to freedom or deliverance. It's, it's, it's nasty, self-sabotaging spirits. If you want to help somebody, your ministry, until you get rid of your garbage, you got no business ministering. You shouldn't even be telling nobody nothing. You should shut your mouth. Go take your lunch break in your car and start repenting until you hate sin, till you hate porn, till you hate weed, till you hate the devil. Oh, you know Jesus, and then, then, then they watch you and they go, if Jesus is what you say, I don't want him because I don't want to be like you. I'm telling you the reality. I looked at people who said they were Christians. I said, oh, man, don't play me. You ain't no Christian. You just ain't got the guts to do what we're doing because you're doing similar things. You just ain't doing them quite to this level, I understand. But that ain't righteousness. I, I, the, and then I met a born-again Christian. He's got a YouTube channel, Pastor Jerome Davidson. So I go to Arizona State. I'm, I'm a J, JUCO transfer, and they, my buddy introduces me to him. But he said, before we go over there, this is a born-again Christian. So don't tell any dirty jokes and uh, don't curse. And I said, oh, born-again Christian, I know those guys, those guys that get back from juvie and they got to walk a straight and narrow because they got, a, they got a probation officer that shows up randomly and you can't be high and drinking or out after, oh, he's born again like that. So I met him one time and never said another word for a year and a half. 
Because why? A dirty joke or, or a cuss word's likely to come out of my mouth. So I'm not going to infringe on, but I didn't understand what a born-again Christian was. I thought everyone's a hypocrite. Everyone's a fake. Because why? I saw hypocrisy. I had 20-20 vision to you being a hypocrite. And once I saw that, I said, I ain't listening. So God knew what I needed. So my wife's father is a pastor who used to take on juvenile delinquents and wards of this or different type of uh, foster kids. So when I, junior college, they only give you tuition and books, he gave me a place to stay. And he showed me there are people who really live right. They live right. They treat people right. They serve people. They love people. And he would confuse me. It's happy for you to put an alternator on a guy's car who has no money and you bought it? If I bought it, bro, you got to put it in yourself. I'm going to bed. There's my tools. I mean, I got a limit to me helping even my good friends. And here you're helping somebody. I said, this is, this is peculiar. This, 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 is, this is weird. But what happens is because he's living righteous, I, I first begin to get convicted. I, I had already cauterized my conscience. I already didn't care about sin. I used to steal and feel bad. Pretty soon, you drink a few things, you steal a few things. You're winning, and we're celebrating over that. We're, we're stealing alcohol. This is the greatest success. Now, we didn't have to pay someone to buy it. We didn't have to spend our money to buy it. We're getting it for free. So I was delusional, but no matter what level of delusion I was in, when I saw someone living righteous, it was piercing into my spirit, man. But when I saw hypocrites, I look back now, and I know a bunch of those guys that I played football with. I know a few of those guys that I even hung around with. They got born again, but they didn't have any power to live out what is right. And a little leaven leavens the whole lump. And so we got to sit down and be real with God. You got to be real with yourself. And then when you see what's really going on with your thoughts and your actions and your motivations, your intentions, your desires, your confusions, your loneliness, your abandonment, your need for people, then you begin to ask him for help so that you can change. Because the Bible says by yourself, you can do nothing. You can't do nothing yourself. He says, so if you can't do anything for yourself and through your own power, why do you try to do it? you got to start at the starting block. You can't take off a, a, a rocket when it's being driven down the road. Elon Musk so-called rockets as they were driving them down uh, Los Angeles. It's got to get into the rocket launcher before it could take off. There was no threat of that just taking off on the back of that pickup truck when it was towing it down Los Angeles Boulevard. It's got to get into the, the rocket launcher. If you're going to do anything for God, you got to get the power of the Holy Spirit you got to ask him, I don't want to think this way anymore. I think this way all the time. Help me. I, I got problems. I'm my dryer. I said, my pants are wet right now. I said, these kids do laundry 50 million times a day. I put this in the washer at 9 o'clock. Now it, it's still wet. Then I throw it in there. I'm trying to get it drying. I'm rushing. Then I look on there. Who puts it on delicate with low heat? Who, met, who does this? We all got human problems. We all got character uh, flaws. Welcome to humanity. Okay, welcome. We're all here. We all fall short of the glory of God. But now, I don't got to live any way I don't want to live. I got to live in this, this sin-stained world. So since I got to live in this sin-stained world, I got to come out from among it. Come out from among them. All the paganism, all the idolatry, all the self-absorption, self-glorification, all the witchcraft, all the manipulation, all the idols. I got to come out now and separate myself. I can't ask God to help me other than get me out of here. But when I want to do something for God, I got to be separate. I got, I, I got to be separate. If I separate myself and I get along with God, now I'm in a position where I can receive something if I listen. And the demons don't want you to listen, so they flood your brain with all kinds of confusion. You know what they use? Everything everyone said to you when you were a kid. That's what they use. And, and what, what, it's the old scenario. There's a problem. Then the demons wait for your reaction. Once they see your re reaction, now they know which move they're going to make with their solution. Oh, yeah. Oh, he'll do it. it, it I, I remember. I remember some people. Insecure as all get out. Uh-oh, but now he found someone to fornicate with in the 11th grade. 
Oh, man, he's over that rejection now. Oh, man, those, that no style having. Now he's got style. He's working to get some, some polo shirts. He, he's changed his life. He's now cool. Uh oh, wh what's going to happen now? Oh, that girl's gone. Oh, he's on the pursuit of another. He'll change you. He did it to me. I'm just using an example where everyone saw someone change when they started in interacting sexually as a teenager. Oh, I've seen people change. That's why I got away from hallucinogenic drugs. I found a good friend. <laughs> this is no joke. You can look up this kid's brother. These dudes were straight killers. They were born genetic freaks. Uh, all his brothers were state champions. One brother was two-time state champion. The brother that was a two-time state champion got arrested for stealing cars but they were one of the richest cattlemen in that area of Nebraska, Car Cattle Company. You can look it up, it was huge. The guy's name was Rick Carr, goes to prison, kills people, and becomes the head of the Aryan nation. And then I'm thinking, this, is this true? And then I get a buddy, calls me when I'm in college. Yeah, dude, he found out who everyone was, and one day he kicked everyone's door in, robbed everybody, five in one night, took everybody down. I was like, that story's true? I thought that was a myth. Well, his brother didn't become the guy I knew was in my class, John. He didn't become a killer. He was a killer, but the drugs, and then the hallucinogenic drugs. And next thing you know, he came over, he was wearing moccasins. And he had some kind of necklace that he made at some sort of head shop, picking out the different beads, and there was a bear on there. And I said, oh, man, these drugs are dangerous. It morphed him. It changed him. Sin changes you. It changes who you think you are. It'll change who you become. Why? Because he gets in there through what? Through the opportunity, through the place that you gave him, that you come in wounded, you come in rejection, he'll give you something. It'll temporarily be a way out of this sin-stained world. That's not how a blood-bought, born-again child of the living God comes out of this sin-stained world, finding some sin that makes you feel comfortable and welcomed and accepted and pleasure. you got to come out and separate yourself. But when you come out and separate yourself, it's lonely. So what happened? I, I, I had to find out my wife needed to be my best friend. <laughs> she wasn't at first. She was just one of my, she was my best of all the ones I had. But... I, I didn't have a lot of time to, I, I didn't have time for, what are you talking about? What? I, my mind was morphed into me, 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 go, 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 get, 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 build, 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 have, have, have. I'm going to be there and I'm going to be on top and, and I need information to get me on the top and where I want to go and have what I want to have. Okay, I understand. I, I love you too. Thank you so much. And, and no, it, it forces you to to, and then I didn't have kids yet, but it forces you then to, to start knowing people at your church. At first, I was like, oh, man, this is a good church. They all love God, but there's no sense me getting too deep because then they're going to ask too much about my, my past. And, you know, they don't probably want to hear that, you know, and I don't probably need to be putting on the back burner on the do not use list because of all your past failures. They're going to use them against you. They always do at school. They always do when you're looking for a job. So might as well not tell these people. And so what happened is I didn't know any of these Christians, although they were my brothers and my sisters, and I saw them worshiping God, and I saw God touching them, and I saw God moving through that place and inspiring us to build a church, to get out of a strip mall and build a nice church, and God blessed us with some land, and we were all out there working diligently trying to clear the land and get it ready and then hire the contractor and get the down payment. We were excited about building something for God, but I didn't want to be known by anybody. Why? Why? what the devil put in my head, that everybody's a hypocrite, but now he turns it around, and I see they're good, but he's telling me, I'm the hypocrite. I'm the oddball. I'm not like them, and if they know who you used to be, they're not going to accept you, and you're not going to truly be one of them. Right now, you got a pretty wife who's very nice and has a really good ability to work with kids. You're in. Just, just keep letting her blend in, and you, you just kind of hide in the, in, in the shadows and don't expose yourself too much. It was a demon turning on me. Slowly, my first friend, Chuck, I, I, I thought he had it all together. We used to go to his Bible study in South Scottsdale. He had these three nice kids. They're all very obedient, beautiful wife. He, he worked hard so she could be a stay-at-home mom and, and, and raise those kids. And I found out one day the life he had. I said, no way. You were one of those dudes. You did what? You, you and your wife were homeless and were living in a house with no heat, and in Arizona it gets down to 55 some night. What? 
Oh, then you find out, oh, everybody's got a story. He just turned it around on me so he would shut me up and shut my ears so I wouldn't get to know anybody so that no one would know me and therefore I wouldn't be transparent with anybody. I wouldn't let anybody's testimony encourage me because I kept them at my own control. Oh, this devil is smart. He don't want you being a part of the body of Christ. He don't want you feeling accepted and loved by God and by the body of Christ. He don't want you encouraged by other Christians who already overcame certain sins. He doesn't want you encouraged by somebody who's already been through what you're going through and he knows the way out. He wants you blind and confused and lonely. So you're going to have to fight through the resistance. You're going to fight through all these preconceived notions that he put in your mind as a kid, who you are what you started becoming when you indulged into sin, who other people are, judging other people, critical towards other people, trying to fix other people is a waste of your time. You know how many people got hopes and, and dreams for this country? I mean, come on. The, the, the best line, although I only listened to Instagram, was, was uh, that Vivek, and he told Nikki Haley, he goes, you're Dick Cheney in some three-inch heels. You are another warmonger. You want war and you want money and you, oh, you want the one world government. Yeah, that's who the people believe this stuff. People believe this. They, but now we got this video that we didn't used to have. And one video shows that the kids in the audience that were asking some politicians and quizzing them on some stuff, it was Pete Booty Judge and Vivek. On the same video, someone found it. Oh, someone was training them. You're not elected. You are selected. And they're select societies, and uh, we ain't of them. And uh, blood-bought, born-again, child of God. Do you believe in Jesus? Oh, <laughs> have you ever confessed your sin? Oh, I just try not to do it anymore. <laughs> Dude, that's all a psyops. If you don't hate him enough, they make him more orange. They, they know what they're doing. And then, yeah, he says something. Then they twist what he said. That's not really what he said. Well, that's what we heard. It's all a delusion. It's a psyops. Why? Because you're going to focus your time. You're going to focus your energy. You're going to focus your emotions on something you cannot change. And if you can change it, the only way you can change it is with prayer. Pray for those that are, that are, that are in authority, that it may go well with you, that you may live simple and quiet lives in the New Testament. You're supposed to live a, a quiet and a simple life. Oh, it's not a life that's, that's boring. It's, it's this exciting, a powerful life, but the world doesn't know anything about it. They, they, they think it's simple. They think it's quiet. They, th they put you all in one bunch. But no, 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 we're a peculiar people. We're, we're, we're a people that have access to the supernatural power of the living God to recreate bodies, to, to raise dead people. Now, I had to use some Narcan to do it, but he was dead until <laughs> I narcan him. Without that Narcan, he dies. So, hey, we're, we're all starting somewhere. I did raise a cat from the dead one time when my mother fell to her knees and cried. And I breathed into him after he was dead, and he came back and lived to be 23 years old. He lived another 20 years. God is my witness. The oldest cat in the world was like 27. I'm like, dude, I might have the oldest cat on earth. It's coming. But then he died. When people would help people, I was like, there's something to this. When people love people but did not get all in their business, run their mouth and talk too much and talk to them too much about Jesus and get them to change, I said, there's something to this. Now there's some power to love somebody. Now there's some power to trust what they're doing is speaking to them. And then loving them enough to wait till they have an opportunity to open their ears and ask a question. Oh, I started learning it. How I learned it was when people would ask me to move. Oh, Rick, you're big and, and you got a truck. Could you help me move? I've been asked to move by more people than you can count. One dude used to come here. I helped him three times. One time he was on the third story of an apartment complex. I said, who in the world would rent a place on the third story of an apartment complex with no elevator? <laughs> but had a friend. We didn't want to hear nothing about Jesus. 
And he was ditching his wife to get a young one because he's got big cash, and she started complaining. He was so self-absorbed, so narcissistic that she tried to kill herself with pills. And he's with his friend, and I'm there, and he goes, why is she doing this to me? I said, dude, what a lack of empathy and remorse. I mean, even if she was, she was just doing it for show, there, there, there's, it's got to not be about you now. But no, it was only about him. So he said, hey, I'm moving. Can you help me? I'm going to have about eight friends there. It shouldn't take long. You know who showed up? Me. And that was it. And then I periodically heard calls about, oh, how something happened. So I didn't say a word because I, I, I started treating people like I want to be treated. The way people impacted me, well, that's the way I'm going to go ahead and make my ministry and my move with people. And so after I helped him, and he was sitting there, and I started my preaching. I mean, this dude's a neck-deep sinner. He used to run, he used to run a, mo a modeling agency and had all the credit card numbers from all the men in Chicago. He was running a full-on escort service. He goes, there's famous people in here. He goes, if they saw their credit card numbers in here, this could be used against them. That thing could be leveraged by somebody. They'd probably pay 50000 for that book of receipts of our clients, some spending tens of thousands. I said, throw it in the trash. Someone will kill you for that. Get that thought out of your head. And all this sin everywhere. And then I began to preach. And what did he have to do? He had to listen. Why? Because I broke my back for the last three hours. I got a ping pong table out of it. I got a safe that I lugged around but didn't have anything worthy of putting in the safe. Then I finally threw it, sold it at a garage sale for 50 bucks. Well, it wasn't worth carrying around for 10 years for 50 bucks. But he left me a couple things. Never played ping pong on the table either. Towed it around here and there. My buddy's got it. I saw it last uh, month in his carport. I don't think he's played ping pong on it yet either. <laughs> but what happens? Ten years later, 14 years later, before he kills himself, he comes in here for deliverance. He said, I've been trying to kill myself, but I keep Googling, will I go to hell if I murder myself? And I can't find... Any place. I was up already. I found the cliff in California. I was ready. I was ready to drive over the cliff, but Junior Seau, he didn't die. Or somebody, I think it was, yeah, he didn't die. So I didn't want to just crash and mutilate myself. So I need help. And it took three hours to get demons. I've never seen nothing like this out of his hands. Satan demonically anointed his hands that everything he touched, he made money. He was a millionaire by 25. He had his first 10 million saved by 35. Just last year, he sold a piece of property for 61 or 71 million, I can't remember, right downtown. He'd been assembling it for years. You gotta do it in different LLCs so the last guy doesn't take the majority of the profits. So you gotta assemble it all and then it's all yours and you rezone it and you sell it to somebody building a high rise. All that success, he still wants to kill himself. New kids, second family, all that, couldn't see it. But what comes back? Oh, the seed. And when I'm preaching to him, I said, you got to forgive everybody. He just didn't come for deliverance. I said, you got to forgive everybody if you want help. If you'll forgive them, God will forgive you. If you won't forgive them, God won't forgive you. you got to forgive them. And all of a sudden, I get a call from a guy. We used to all work together. We actually all worked for him. This was another one of his employees. And... He was going to beat him up in a real estate conference, and he was slobbering and ready to smash him with his phone. And, and my buddy was like, hey, he called me. It was like 10, 8 years ago. He goes, dude, do you think he'll kill me? He's threatening to kill me. My friend said I should get a restraining order. I said, well, if he's telling you he's going to kill you, he's not going to kill you. If he didn't tell you, you might want to watch out. But he, he's not going to kill you. Well, that guy calls Two weeks after I tell him, if you want your, your life back, you got to forgive. He calls. He goes, you won't believe it. I had a wonderful conversation. We, we forgave each other. Oh, it was an answer to the instruction. He, God was giving him a way out. He wanted God to help him. God begins to give you a road map on your way out. In order for you to get out, you got to follow God down the road map. And he uses people. And then he uses you to go back and forgive people who ripped you off. That other guy did rip him off. He took all his, all his insight, all his understanding of the auction. He got his own people and he started double dipping. He was, he was getting paid by the company. He was doing side deals with, with the company's information. So, you know, this is a former ticket scalper for that. You, you get a cracked head, not your skull, but, you know, you know, stitches on your forehead so you remember not to do it. I mean, he was crazy like that. But in reality, God put it back together. 
Now, they're not buddy buddies, but they forgave each other. He was moving. He was moving towards the deliverance. And then he went through a test. He said, I went up to Sedona, and he had a, he had a new age first wife who used to curse him all the time, and he didn't believe in curses. I was there the first time, first time he met her. We were, we were working the, the Pro Bowl in Honolulu, Hawaii. And uh, she started cursing him. He, and she helped him set up that escort business. She helped him get this demonic anointing to make millions and millions of dollars, which she got half. And he goes up to Sedona because he's, he's halfway with Christ and halfway with the supernatural. His dad was an atheist, devout atheist. I used to preach to him smoking pot with his dad before I was even born again. I'd preached God to him and Jesus and didn't even know, didn't even know the Lord. And he goes up there and he said, I'm staying at this resort and I'm at the jacuzzi and all of a sudden this girl is just, she's, she's ready to, for me to go to the room. She's bringing me wine. And he's like, man, this wasn't what I looked for. I wanted to find God. I wanted some help. Um, I was just looking for some truth. And now here she comes and she went back. She said, I'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. I'm going to get another bottle of wine. And when she went to go get another bottle of wine, I made her run from my room. And I ran in there. He said, the minute I got in there, it was so crazy. I got violently ill, but I wasn't sick. He said, I was, on, I was in front of the toilet, and I'm just vomiting, vomiting, vomiting. I said, bro, you were going through deliverance. I didn't even tell him what deliverance was. I didn't even tell him at that point he had deliverance. You begin to obey God. You begin to shun evil. You will go through deliverance no matter what kind of knowledge you have. We're just giving you all the knowledge from 20 years of experience from Mike and 14 years from me and Kelly. We're giving you everything we know. But if you follow God, he will set you free. It's a 100%. Because I'll guarantee you, I don't want anyone to do it, but someone's going to come up here and they're going to be Billy Dum Dum. And then Holy Spirit's going to be moving, oh, oh, not me. Dude, shut your eyes and fight. It's a war. Oh, God had to tell me what was going on. I came in here, I was a preacher, and I didn't go looking for porn. I knew porn was nasty. I knew, I knew porn will diminish everything you have everywhere you go. I'm like, oh, man, I'm not sexy. I'm going to have to lose this gut. Man, I need hair train. I, I didn't want to live under that kind of pressure of everything being sexualized and someone looking at me sexually, and, and oh, I can tell that look in her face. I wasn't sexually appealing to her. Darn it. I, I don't want nothing to do with no porn. I want to be happy with whatever I look like, fat face, fat belly, not care. I don't care. So if I got God's love, I'm good. But what happens? I wanted to smoke my sorrows away because I had 12 years of smoking pot. And when you smoke pot, you don't care. And you know what? When someone tells you, you know who you like to smoke pot with? People pleasers. People will tell you how good you used to do it. Oh, man, we can relive. Man, we relived every junior college play that we ever played in the two years of junior college. I mean, I almost thought I did this in the NFL that I was about to be enthroned into the Hall of Fame. <laughs> so we went over and over everything we did that was exciting or a big play or a big win. And then what happened? I didn't heed the voice of God. And this guy was a porn addict. He admitted he was a porn addict. And I said, man, this is not, you know, we're here to pump each other up. I can't give you no daps on being a porn addict. That, that's, oh, man. I don't. He said he conceded to it. He said, the girls that I like, I'll pursue them and I can get them. But then they want me to buy them a condo. They want me to buy them a new car. He goes, I refuse to get played by some chick. But the women who like me for the way he looked, and he wasn't too handsome at that point, uh, and he said, well, I'm not sexually attracted to them, so I just watch porn. I said, oh, man. I said, okay. I, I, my brain was trying to compute what that information would do for me, and it was, don't go into his office. Stay in the living room. I, 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 no, it was a warning in the spirit world, and I was spiritually blinded because I was inebriated. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for souls to devour. I couldn't even discern what was being told. It was a spiritual warning, and, I, and it came into my body. A lust demon can come through drugs. A lust demon can come through someone that doesn't even know they have the demon when you have sex with them. It's just been lying dormant. 
It's just on, on the low, just waiting to, to get some Christian. Oh, they want Christians. You, a Christian will, probably has delivered sinners. Why? Because all their demons left that sinner knowing they'll just re-up over time because they're walking aimlessly without Christ, and they just load into the Christian, all of them. Their lives change sometimes after one physical intimacy. Sometimes the devil's smart enough to know that he's got to keep walking you down the track so you can't figure out where it came from. He's got to send in some violence. He has to send in some betrayal. He has to send in some kind of inebriation, a DUI, so that you get confused where it came from because he doesn't want you telling anyone or wanting anyone things can come into you when you do this. So he's always hiding and manipulating. So I, I, I had to go through deliverance. Oh, and you know what the Lord showed me? He, he showed, the Lord is, is he, he's given me the gift of dreams. I dream dreams for other people that are warnings. I, I, I dreamed a dream that there was going to be a river, and it flowed right through here. And I had some friends that played in the NFL, and we were talking about maybe running the Sunday as a church, kind of an intern church, get you going where you could help people by the time you get through here a little while. And, and the, the flow was coming right from the office down there. It was coming right down here. But we had... We had made it with wood, and all the wood was beginning to pop up. And I said, oh, wow, if I knew this flow would have came here, I, I, I would have never used this type of material, this wood. Then I had to ask God, well, what is this? He said, you're trying to build with wood. The Holy Ghost isn't pliable for those people. This is, this, is, this is Holy Ghost ministry. Holy Ghost ministry is only for those people who are set apart. They, did, they weren't set apart. They had fame, they had friends, they had influence, but God wasn't looking for that. He's looking for people who are pliable with the Holy Spirit. So before I, when, when I was dealing with the lust spirits, uh, all of a sudden I, I had to ask, I have to ask God, he, all of a sudden I'm being drug around, this will sound funny, it's Brock Lesnar, I think he's pulling me by my ear, and he's pulling me, and I, you know, I was about 40, this is like 15 years ago, I was in my 40s. And this is when he was, you know, the top dog, and he's in fit shape, and, and he's like pointing, and there's all these people sitting down waiting, but they're just a bunch of average-looking people, no rhyme or reason what's up with them. And he kind of punks me out, and he sets me in front of this TV, and there's a thought in my head, hey, this guy's not that big. You know, if you blast him dead in his face, anybody can go down. And then there was some fear, of like, well, what if I can't knock him out, and he's just drilling me on the ground and gives me a brain damage? There was some fear, and I didn't do anything. He just punked me out. I always hated being punked out. I hated being when I was a kid. It made me a different person when I was being bullied when I was in seventh grade and you got ninth graders. That's a, they got smart in Arizona. They only do sixth, seventh, and eighth. Man, when you're in ninth grade and you're driving a car and you got some kid 12, you rule the roost, and I hated that. What was it? It was symbology that that demon I'm not saying Brock Lesnar is a controlling demon. It was the symbology is he was a strong man, and he was punking me out and putting me in front of the TV like, you go here. God was showing me it's demons. It's the strong man, and he'll go and lead you to do something, and he'll make you think you're doing it yourself. There's a strong man. How can you pillage? Your body is a... The demons are a sign for you. They know your name. They know your mother, your grandmother, your grandfather. They know everybody. They know everything about you. They know every lie. They sent every lie to you. They know what you believe about God. They know what you don't know about God. They know what you'll fight. They know what you won't fight. And they send the demons to come in. The first time they, they, they get a place. When you watch something, that spirit came in because I gave him place. By smoking it. But then I obeyed him. Once you obey him, he first he gets a place, then he gets a hold. Oh, Jesus said, hey, don't fret about me going to the cross of Calvary. The prince of this world has no hold in me. He's not taking me there. I'm giving my life. I'm doing that on my own. So once he gets a hold, he can take you places. You better hear me. You want to be taken somewhere you don't want to go? You, you want to be belittled? You want to be bullied? By a demon, he'll do it to you. I was a born-again Christian. I'm not patting myself on the back. All glory to God and thankful for every mentor that sent my, was sent my way. At that point, I had led thousands of people to Jesus Christ. Thousands. That's not, that's, that's not exaggeration. And he was bullying me. And, and the whole thing, God was showing, hey, if you fight back, you got to blast him. 
You got to take him out now. It's you or him because he can beat you down. He, he could hurt you. He could give you brain damage. So when you swing, you better swing hard and you better win. But at that point, I was intimidated. I was like, man, you know, I'm 42 now, and man, he's 32, and he's on the juice, and his traps are up by his ears, and, and I ain't what I used to be, and maybe on my best day, I got a million excuses. This is just a dream. He'll give you dreams, he'll give you a road, but you got to obey the voice of the Lord to be free, and you got to fight back. You got to fight to win. You got to fight to win. Oh, I was in Flagstaff. I was going to eat a sandwich. I rode my motorcycle up there. And there's this guy. He's going into the restaurant. Or, and, and he, he, no, the girl is. So he's got two girlfriends. And then they're all kissing. They're in one of those whatever, two girls, one guy. The, the, and they're high. I can tell they're high. The sleepy eyes. You know, I used to get high. I know how your eyes look when you're high. And, and I was like, man, I bet this guy thinks he's on top of the world. And these were pretty girls. I mean, they're all kissing like they love each other. They found, they found heaven on earth. I bet he thought he was on top of the world. You're high, you're working, you're living in Flagstaff. You got three, you got three people supporting the income. You got three people in the sack. Oh, wow. Uh, man, he'll give you the world. He's looking for you to forfeit. He's looking for you to forfeit. And you know what? Once he gets a place... And then he gets a hold, and then he gets a stronghold, and then he takes you further into oppression. Then, then he takes you into deception, and you're wrestling between oppression and deception. He'll get you used to misery and pain. He'll get you used to lies. He'll get you used to self-hatred. He'll get, you, he'll get you to turn on yourself. Why? Because you stop giving mercy to other people, and he's going to use it against you. You stop loving people when they're unlovable. You stop being kind to people because they're not kind back to you. You stop doing stuff for other people because they stop doing stuff for you. And so that's the same measure that you're going to be judged by the spirit world by what you do in the natural world. Luke chapter 9, 51, he says this. Now it came to pass there was a time for him to be received up. And he set his face to go up to Jerusalem. And he sent his messengers before his face, and they went, they entered the village of the Samaritans to prepare a place for him. But they didn't receive him because his face was set for the journey in Jerusalem. And when his disciples, James and John, saw this, they said, Do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them just as Elijah did? But Jesus turned and rebuked them and said, You do not know what manner of spirit you're of. For the Son of Man did not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. They went on to another village. You can be of another spirit. They're walking. They're talking to Jesus. And they, 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 let's do this thing. I, Elijah burns them. You want us to go ahead and give the call? Let's burn these suckers. Let's burn them. Let's burn these Samaritans. They, they called Samaritans dogs. They were the Jews. Salvation was of the Jews. The Samaritans, Jesus told the woman at the well, you worship what you don't know. Oh, he said, you don't know what manner of spirit you're of. You can be of another spirit by the way you're thinking, and you can think you're doing right. You can think you're righteous. You can think you're on the right track. And so what happens? We all got to get rebuked by the Lord. You, you got to suffer. Sin will make you suffer. And if it doesn't make you suffer, that's why it says if you hate your child, spare the rod. Don't spank him. This is a community of non-spanked kids all around here. They got a trophy case. It's a, it's a liberal school for music and dancing. It is a trophy case of no discipline. You walk aimlessly, you fall into a pit. So you train a child in the way you should go. Well, you got to use the rod. Well, the Lord didn't tell you just to do it to kids. He'll use the rod. Sometimes your money's got to be shut down. Sometimes things got to be on empty. Sometimes you've got to shut everything down. Things got to, alcohol's got to make you sick when you're pooping and puking on yourself every morning. At one point, you, you might come to your senses. I'm an alcoholic and this has to stop. You try dabbling and having a little, but a little won't do it. You got to do it all day from morning. I knew a guy who had to drink a fifth of vodka. And he would go through the vomiting and the diarrhea back and forth until he could get enough down into his system. And then his body would operate. And then he would go run, run a photo mat company. I knew him personally. That's nasty. 
That's nasty. So I, I, I would get ready. I would get ready. I, I don't know when the end's coming, but we got the signs, right? Lawlessness abounding. Lawlessness and high, wickedness in high places. Teaching wrong as though it was right. Looking down on right as it's wrong. I mean, it's upside down now. The world is upside down. I'd get ready. And all you got to do is know it's them. Now, you got to change. I got to change. We got to discipline ourselves. Just because God gives you the word, he gives you the direction, you have to discipline yourself to keep doing it. You, you, you have to discipline yourself. When you get to a, a, a level when demons audibly talk in your brain, they were already in there a long time before they audibly talked. You think they just came when they started talking. No, they started talking when they said they got no shot against us. We got this place now. Boys, let's, let's entertain ourselves. I'm, I'm tired of whispering and talking in the dreams. Let's just, let's just talk. And they'll argue. People say, I got demons arguing with each other in my head. Well, they've been there for a long time. Now they're in the position where they think they're in authority. But we have Christ. But we have Christ's blood. And we have mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. They're trying to judge you. Why? Because you used to judge people harshly. You used to judge people unrighteously. You used to judge people in a way when you had a plank in your own eye and you were looking at their speck and you didn't do it right. And so now you got to repent of all that. You got to unwind where the places you used to give the devil. You, you, you got to first do that before you can break his hold. A lot of people just want to break his hold, but they won't shut the door and, 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 and forget how and why you used to like sin and turn on it and hate it. But the devil will remind you how you used to like sin. If you want to play that record, he'll play it for you, and he'll even light you up emotionally. I mean, I, I remember my first dance. Man, I wasn't no dancer. I didn't work on no dance moves, but I just know I, I didn't have the top girl in the school, but I had one of the top five, and for me, that was the top, and that's all that mattered. And, and I, I was electric. And second to being married, that first dance when I was 14 years old, well, that was and he'll go, wow, wow, remember? Remember feelings? Ah, oh, you don't feel like that anymore, do you? Hey, you want to feel like that again? Oh, yeah, I want to feel intrigue. Oh, I want to feel love. Oh, I want to feel romance. Oh, I want to feel like someone cares. Oh, I want to be wind and die. Oh, he'll bring those feelings back to you, but it'll come through the wrong person, and it will only be temporary, and it will only be so that he can not only have the place, but he can have the position, which is a stronghold. He's looking to have the stronghold so he can sink your Christian life, so he can sink your ministry, so he can sink your faith, so he can sink your dreams. So he's willing to play. Oh, he, you'd be surprised. You, you start walking with Jesus for real. You start saying no to the devil. Just no is the most powerful word in defeating the devil. No. But you can't say no and be on the wrong road. That's a, you can't go to the strip club and say no. Now, you, are, you already said yes, thinking about it, starting the car, driving there, parking, going, paying your entry fee, sitting down. You, you've been saying yes with what your actions, so you, you have to say no and then walk it out, the action of no. And you know what? He'll show himself, and you'll see how nasty he is. You'll see, whoa, this is really him. Wow. He can do this with people. Oh, it's amazing. He can do things with human beings. Dude, I'm telling you, I'm smashed. I haven't crashed my mountain bike in two years. I got a busted back, a busted toe from a man Saturday steamrolling down a hill. After a one-hour ride, there's like a three-second gap where there's a blind spot on this trail. And he's there, and he's going faster than anyone ever seen. He was 160. I'm 300. He launches me to where that chair is. I'm laying there. He hits the ground. He goes, you all right? I'm like, dude, if I get up and my, my collarbones popped out, if my shoulders rinse, I'm going to be so pissed. So I said, just give me a minute. And I just prayed, like, Lord, I can deal with this. I could hear the air leaking out of my front tire. My, my bike was crank smashing his. I said, I can deal with this, Lord. I just don't want no tour rotator cuff. I just don't want no collarbone popping out of my, my shirt. I said, give me a minute. I prayed started moving it. Oh, I didn't hear one click. 
I said, oh, the arms swell up. I can deal with that. My back was tight. My foot hurt. He's looking like, oh, no, this dude's about to mop me up. We're in the middle of this place. There ain't no witnesses. No one's going to hear my cry for help. I said, dude, uh, it's all right. Hey, wrong place, wrong time. And I started walking 25 minutes back to the parking lot. Hey, in this world, you're going to have weird things happen, bad things. I I don't go focus. You know, why did the devil do that? How did the devil do that? Man, this was the devil. I'm mad at you, devil. I I just took it. I said, I'm going to be grateful. I'm going to be grateful I'm not busted up worse than this. And, uh, hey, if I'm ungrateful or I take an offense, then I'm putting myself in jeopardy. I'm putting myself in a position for this to happen a second time. I'd rather this not happen a second time. So I go about my day. Sometimes you got to lick your wounds and go about your day. Sometimes you, you suffer from some things that you didn't do nothing wrong. You didn't do nothing wrong. It's just wrong in this insane world. But you got to keep on that path when it's tough. And you'll meet the Lord on that path. And he'll come through with some help. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn. You got to mourn for your own sins. You got to mourn for the sins of the world. There has to be a, a sorrow. He, he's telling you, if you do these things, you'll tap into my, to my kingdom. There's two kingdoms. There's the kingdom of darkness. It operates on this world. And there's the kingdom of God. Uh, it's in the third heaven, but it comes down and it operates here on this earth. But in order to tap in, you got to do some things. you got to think some things. If you do them and you think them, pretty soon you can feel them when they're God things. He said, blessed are the poor in the spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed is those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. This doesn't mean those who are sorry will be comforted. Those who just had that moment of real clarity. No, you... you you can do these things. You, you, you can mourn. You can apologize for the sins and your own sins, the sins of your forefathers. You can tap into some, some reality. Porn hurts people. There, there's this new thing. is podcast. Oh, I guarantee you, podcast ain't going to be a thing of the future. It's going to be a thing of the past. It's going to be like disco and bell-bottom jeans. I don't know how people can just listen to this, this stuff over and over, like tapping into mindless stuff. CIA agents like Joe Rogan uh, and Alex Jones. Oh, you think they just made it where they are and have what they have and they're not who? Oh, uh, yeah, they've been around for a long time and they're government agents. I- I'll bet my bottom dollar on it. Won't be able to prove it till we get to glory because they'll never tell on themselves. But people just listen to this stuff. And-, and they always do something to mock you, too. Joe Rogan is five foot one. He's, he is. I got pictures. He, he wears these booster shoes, and he says he's 5'4". He's this, he would be this tall to me right here. So he's portrayed as the macho of macho mans, a man of the fight game, a man of karate, a man of drugs and sorcery and, and fine whiskeys. It's, it's, a, it's a mind control because they want to control society. They want to control your emotions. They want to light you up like an elixir of life so that you crave and want this life and you want to be like somebody. Look, you want to be like God? You got to mourn for sin. You got to have, you got to let God into your human emotions. What's different about of a human, human emotions? You have empathy. You, you, you have strength, you have hope, you have encouragement, you, you have sorrow, you have all these things an animal doesn't have. And, and I talked about it. I can deal with knuckleheads. But after one point, you don't listen. I, I can really be frustrated and said, I ain't dealing with that knucklehead anymore. $2,000 later, 50,000 prayers later, go down the road, find someone on YouTube, I'm done. But then sometimes someone will he'll call. And God will just touch me right here in my brain. I I didn't know it was touching me there in the brain, but scientists have told you this is where all your seat of emotions are in your prefrontal cortex. And all of a sudden, God will touch me and just say, just give him one more chance. Well, Well, that's what makes us a human, to be able to hear from God, to be able to feel what God wants, to be able to feel these things and what other people are going through, and to have a realization that, hey, there's a chance for you to help them. Let's not count all the other failures as going to be the next move in the next future. Let, let's, let's be the people of second chances. Let's be the people of hope. Let's be the people of courage. In order to go into that realm, oh, because drugs kill this. Uh, these killed it. Oh, you didn't know that. Oh, the neuroscientists are telling you now. It goes right up here, and it makes you, 
a little bit uh, less sensitive and less caring. Start watching the people. Now, a third of the people got only water. It wasn't anything in it. And a third got one third of what was in it. And then a third got the full real deal. They've already studied thousands and thousands of the empty bottles because you can't get it all out of there. So they pull it all out of there and they test it. A third of it was literally water. That was the grace of God that went out. So some Christians who just didn't know and who were spiritually ignorant and were operating by the spirit of the world and fear, they got grace. They got grace. Hey, don't, don't be playing around. Don't be counting that again because you need your job. You, the grace is like there's a small amount of grace. Sometimes there's a lot of grace, but you don't play with grace. Now you know. Now you know. You do not do that. And that ain't for us. They shall be, it says, bless those who mourn. They'll be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Women, if you are out there showing your butts and showing your boobs, you reap what you sow. There's talkers that will talk you so smooth. I, I, got, I, got, I had friends that would be players, and they would sing a song to a woman about loving them. I said, dude, how can you do that? Like, dude, I, I had a hard time telling my wife I loved her because there was some, just this rejection, and no one told me they loved me, and finally, I love you. Now I can say it easy, and I say it to my kids all the time. I'm breaking the cycle. But he was saying, I love you. I said, dude, you were just fighting with your other girlfriend. You're juggling four girls so that you can get new guest jeans and a, and a new shirt and new shoes so you can go out and find more girls. What, what is this? Oh, you have no idea. And, and he was, why are you doing that, dude? I do love this chick. I said, dude. This is me you're talking to. You're lying to yourself. You can't lie to me. Oh, man, get off my back. Dude, they believe it. They believe it. People are in delusions, and they'll put their delusion on you until you got three kids out of wedlock, and they leave you busted up in an apartment trying to scrape for rent and watching for your stuff to get stolen in your car, getting your, your, your tire slashed. When you've been working all your life, he'll take everything. He is so vicious, so you've got to come out of him, and you've got to go into discernment. In order to have discernment, you, that's a gift from God. That's an attribute of the Holy Spirit. You've got to go into the commerce of God. Blessed are the meek. You've got to be a meek person, not a showboat. And your value doesn't come from what you're, what you're flaunting to everybody. You're just enticing lust demons. You, these things, these shorts, dude, they're... At Studio 54, women would have blushed at these new workout leotards that go right up your crack. They would have blushed at Studio 54 on drugs in New York City in the 80s. They'd have blushed at you doing your body like that. This is not for us. You're gonna, the demons are going to have legal right to send somebody to you. And, and housewives, oh, I, my wife had a friend that was a fitness model. She was a friend of friend, but she'd work out with her. And, and she, would even, she would even do it. A young man came up to me today. She was 40. She goes, he was in his 20s, very handsome man. He says, girl, I know how hard you work to have that body. I just wanted to say it's appreciated. She puts it on her Facebook. How long do you think the divorce was before that divorce happened? About one year. Why? Because the world will talk to you, and the world will tell you your value, and the world will tell you your, your worth, and the world will make you feel that. You can feel it. You can feel these things. You can feel the spirit of the world. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they'll be filled. Who told you you get filled with, with, with righteousness without a hunger and a thirst for it? Who told you that? They, God's going to fill you. I want it, Lord. Me, me, me. I'll rock for Jesus. I'll preach. I'll dye my hair. I'll get a YouTube channel for you. Dude, that's a clown show. That's a clown show. And there's enough clowns to follow them to make you feel like, whoa, they're doing something. <laughs> doing clown stuff. You've got to have a hunger and a thirst to be filled. That's, the, uh, that's what the scripture says in Matthew chapter 5. If you're not, you don't got a hunger and a thirst, you don't want it, you don't get it. If you could use it or live without it, then you don't get it. I guess I'm losing the crowd. We'll wrap her up in the last few of this verse. Blessed are the merciful. They'll obtain mercy. Why don't you have any mercy? Because you're not giving it away. You're not giving it away. It's right here. I'm telling you the, the answer to your problems. 
What, how, your key to deliverance, it's right here. If you want mercy, you give mercy. Blessed are what? The pure at heart, for they'll see God. Uh-oh, now this is the process. You, you were poor in spirit. Now he gave you the Holy Spirit, ability to love him. He says now you begin to mourn, and now you begin to be comforted. Now you begin to take on some meekness and get rid of the self-glorification and you start become one that's going to inherit the earth. Now you start to hunger and thirst for righteousness and you get filled. Now you're filled with mercy and you begin to give it to other people. And then it says, uh-oh, now you get a pure heart. Now you get to see God. It says this, if you love me, you'll obey me. And if you obey me, then me and my father will come and make a home with him. You can't obey God unless you're born again. He says, he's going to send you the Holy Spirit to be with you forever, the spirit of truth. That comes for those who obey God, who are born again. And then he says later, he says, then we will manifest ourselves to them. You want to see the manifestation of God? There's a process. And it says right there, the pure at heart, they see God. That means they walked with a road, a road with Jesus. They went through a refining process with Jesus, and they got Jesus. They got delivered along that way. I guarantee you that's a road of deliverance. Now, blessed are the peacemakers. I'm not trying to blow up the Ukraine. I'm not trying to send some nukes to Hamas. I'm trying to pray for peace. I'm trying to push back the inevitable that the judgment of God is coming upon this sin-stained earth. I'm trying to get more of an opportunity to get some people saved. I want to live my life out. I want to fulfill my call. I want to see my sons rise up and minister in the power of the Holy Spirit. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Now he tells you, it ain't all cookies and cream. They'll hate you when you do good. The devil will send out the haters. Blessed are they when they revile you and persecute you. You're blessed. Oh, they might be hurting you in your money. They might be hurting you at your job. You're staying in this blessing. You, 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 you got the peace. You got the inheritance. You got the pure heart. You got the seeing of God. You, you were called a son of God. It says, when they say all kinds of evil against you for falsely for my name's sake, rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. So they persecuted the prophets who were before you. It's already happened to all the righteous men. All the, all the men of God went through this. There's nothing strange happening to you. It's just what happens in this sin-stained world. So I got to be walking down that thin and narrow road because the minute I start taking the fence and the minute I start judging people, unjustly or in a way that I don't want to be judged. The minute I start trying to fix somebody, their little problems, and I'm not dealing with my problems, then we got problems. That's your road to deliverance. But just say, hey, some of you are ready. Some of you know there's a big bully pulling you around. I mean, it literally, I was, I was, you know, I was probably not as fat as I was, uh, and, and it, he's pulling me, he's mean, and all these people were watching. I realized those were the demons waiting to jump in me the minute I watched. The, the TV wasn't on. He led me right to there. It was symbolic of the Internet. Log on to that, and these are the boys going to get in here. The strong man is the one that's leading you to open the door because he needs you to be fearful. He needs you to be intimidated. He needs you to be under his control so that all those things can get in your life and cause further pain and suffering. Sit, you want to get really sick? Start grumbling and complaining all the time, murmuring. Man, I, one of my mentors was a powerful man of God, Brother Ludlow Walker from Jamaica. And he came to this church. He was a beachy, some kind of like between Mennonite and Amish. He had a collar. And he goes, there's some serious sin in the church. It's murmuring and complaining. I was, I was pierced. I was like, Shy. I said, I bet they think they're talking about these old ladies in here. It's me. <laughs> I mean, I was like, I complain all the time. I, I'm living in a delusional world. I could have had this. I could have had that. I could have made a little more. Why did I do that? Why did why'd this happen? Murmuring constantly. This guy was powerful. He tore down his hotel in the Caribbean down to the ground because he had 
pushed out all these people that were natural born citizens of this Caribbean island. And they strong armed them so they could manipulate all the land. And God showed up and touched him. And he tore it down to the ground and gave every toilet and every piece of lumber for those people to buy their land back. And, and he sold it back to them, and they rebuilt their houses with that ex-hotel right there. He went back to Miami, Florida. He got back with his wife, and he started washing cars with a bucket and a hose from a vacant lot in which he rented for a hundred and some dollars, and he put a sign, hand car wash. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, and he'll exalt you in due time. You got to follow God. Following God is sacrifice. God put people in my life that live like this so that I would know clearly the way that you're supposed to live to have what you want. I saw that peace. I told after I seen him, I said, Lord, why don't I have peace like this man? That night I went home and I threw $50,000 worth of stuff out of my house that wasn't illegal. It was just wrong with God. And I started setting it out gently as I got some bolder in faith, I was launching it in the backyard. I counted it as rubbish because it was holding me back from doing what God wanted me to do. And the result of not doing what God wanted me to do, I was living in mental turmoil and torment. And I didn't want it anymore. You don't want it anymore? There's going to have to be some sacrifice. There's going to have to be some fight. But when you fight, I, the thought came, how do you beat this guy? I'm like, well, I'm 6'3". Brock, Brock Lesnar 6'3". I mean, if I crack him right in the face, he'll drop just like that. But I better, hit him right, right, I better hit him right in the bridge of the nose. I better hit him right here. I better drop him because if I swing and miss or if I get hit him half-hearted, he's going to come back and pulverize me. I had the realization right there. It was in the dream. God was telling me, your freedom is going to take a fight, and you're going to have to fight the strong man. Fight the strong man tonight. You can go through it forever. You want to do a little burping? You want to do call? You want to do that? You, know, uh, you want to do that for 50,000 years? You can do that for 50,000 years. Or you could go to the strong man and say, I'm done sinning. And my way out is Jesus Christ. I'm done sinning, and my only source of hope to keep going strong is not in me because I tried me. I'm going to have to seek Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit every single day. And then I'll win, and then I'll have victory. But I don't like this. I know this ain't right. I got the conviction of the Holy Spirit. I know this ain't right, and I don't like this no more. And any pleasure I get, it ain't worth the suffering that, that proceeds days and weeks and months down the road. I'll show you how to do it. Heavenly Father, oh, thank you that we can call you Father. We don't have to say, my God, God. We can say, Father, my Father, my Heavenly Father. Oh, that's because of my Savior and my King, Jesus. Oh, the one that paid my debt. Lord, I deserve to go to hell. I deserve to bear your wrath of disobedience, betrayal, double-mindedness, hypocrite i was a hypocrite i was judging people falsely i did all those things lord but i thank you that i can find mercy and i can find help in my time of need because what you did jesus what you did for me you paid my debt in full you paid my price on the cross the blood was the price your life was the price and you did it for me Lord, I pray your blood would wash over me. I turn from these sins to you. Lord, I count all this sinful pleasure as trash. All these self-glorifying achievements, I count them as rubbish. <clears throat> Lord, I apologize. I've done many things that even makes me ashamed. I, I've had that revelation even as a sinner. Lord, I repent of all of it. I repent of the guilt that came with it. I, I, I repent of the condemnation that followed me around ever since I did it. Lord, I thank you that I can come to you boldly in my time of need. It's the only way anyone can come to you is boldly in the time of need. The lepers came in worshiping. That's how you come in, worshiping. And you said, if you're willing, you can make me clean. He said, I am willing. You are willing to cleanse lepers who come in worshiping you're willing to forgive sinners who come in worshiping i'm coming in praising lord the time's running out 
I need to make, I can't give up another month. I can't give up another year. I can't give up another thousand excuses. I'm coming now, praising your holy name, the God of all mercy and the God of all truth, the God of all hope. I'm praising you, Lord. I want to come back, and I want to come closer than ever. And I want you to put your arms around me. I want to put my arms around you, and I want to love you and not let you go, Lord. I want to seek you in the morning. I want to seek you in the day. I want to seek you at night. When I'm running low, I want to count on you. I want to talk with you through my struggles and my pains. I want to sit alone, and I want to deal with some issues. I want to hear some solutions from heaven. I'm, I've been listening to too many people. I've been listening to my own thoughts. I've listened to the wrong people as well, and it's only caused me all of it to go into confusion. I need to be able to get alone with you. I need my mind. I need my sensitivity. I need my compassion. And I need to be able to mourn and feel sorrow for sin. Lord, I'm asking you to come in, Lord, and restore me. Come in tonight, Lord. Turn the lights on for me. I want to see you again. I want to have hope, and I want to have a, a, a godly, a good expectation of the future, Lord. I'm tired of the gloom and the doom, and I'm tired of the despair. I'm tired of being lonely. I'm tired of isolating myself from the body of Christ, looking at them like they won't love me, looking at them like they're not lovable. I need to be a part of the family of God. The days of rebellion got to come to an end. I got to plug myself in. I got to get myself around someone that can help me. I got to get around some encouraging people. I got to get around people that, are, that the light of Christ is shining through. So I repent of all that, Lord, doing it my way. I don't want to be a half-hearted Christian to my friends. I want to leave them a real testimony of your power. I want to give them an adequate representation of who you truly are. I know who you are. I apologize when I wasn't a good ambassador, when I was shady. Tired of being shady tonight, Lord, I repent. Have mercy on my soul. I renounce a giving the devil a place. Tonight I say he has no place in my life. He'll only steal. He'll only kill me. He'll only destroy me. He cannot be negotiated with. He cannot be talked to. Uh, he has to be dealt with and say, no, I belong to the Lord Jesus Christ. I've been paid for in full by the death and the shed blood of Jesus, the resurrection on the third day. My debt's paid. And I don't want anything to do with the devil. I don't want to sin against God anymore. I don't want to sin against my own soul anymore. So I thank you for forgiving me, Lord Jesus. And tonight I'm going to swing hard. Your word is powerful. Your promises are powerful. I'm going to swing from that position of power. And I'm going to, I'm going to see you move, Lord, and set me free. I, I, I don't want to go home with this spirit, this baggage. I'm asking you to deliver me tonight, Lord. And I'm thanking you for doing it in Jesus' name. Just stay in your seats right now. Every, you just keep your head down just for a second. Don't, don't, don't just check the box because you've been doing great. I believe everyone can go to another level when the Holy Spirit's here. He'll reveal something to you. Just, just speak back to him. I don't, you don't have to yell to him. Just say, I give no place to you, devil. You're an offense unto me. I do not allow you to steal. I do not allow you to kill. I do not allow you to destroy me. I have the blood of Jesus Christ. I have the Holy Spirit power. And I'm telling you no right now in Jesus' name. You're not going to have my ministry. You're not going to have my health. You're not going to have my mind. You're not going to have my sexual character. In the name of Jesus, the Son of God, I command you to let me go right now. I'm not a fearful and a doubting person. I want fear and doubt out of me in the name of Jesus. Right now, right now in Jesus' holy name. Now take a big breath. Nicely come out of there, devil. Let him go. Let him go. Let him go right now. Come on, let him go. You're an offense unto me. I know you do that to me. I know you do that to my genitals. I know you give me those perverted thoughts. I know that's you talking into my head. I know it's you. Come out right now in Jesus' holy name. The ministry team, don't be alarmed. They got badges on. They're going to pray for you. Just keep going. They're going to give you a little, little boost. Just fight right now. I'm not going home like this. You told me I'm mentally ill. I canceled the assignment of mental illness in Jesus' name. You told me I was bipolar. You told me I was a pervert. You told me I was an alcoholic. You told me I was a drug addict. You told me I was a failure. I say no to you in the name of Jesus, the Son of God. Come out of there right now. 
Take a big breath. Come on out, devil. Stop blocking my life. Stop blocking my life. Stop tormenting my mind. You told me no too many times. God told me yes. God brought me right down here into the front row to say yes to me. He loves me. I am not that person anymore. Stop tormenting me with sins of my past. In the name of Jesus, guilt, leave her right now. Guilt, you leave her right now. You've been blocking all the answers to her prayers, telling her she's not worthy of it. Jesus Christ is worthy of all glory and praise, and he did everything for her. It's mercy and grace. Thank you, Jesus, for healing her soul. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We don't have to go home the same. We don't have to go home the same. Thank you, Jesus. That hard-heartedness that's blocking these women from receiving the love of Jesus Christ, I lose your hold. You're blocking the love of Jesus. You're blocking the compassion of Jesus. You're, you're blocking the divine expectations. You're loose right now in Jesus' name. Loose right now. I want that heavy heart to come out right now. Heaviness in the heart, I command you to go right now. Heaviness of the heart, I command you to go. Come out of there, all that heaviness, telling her she's unworthy, telling her she shouldn't expect anything from God, pointing at all her sins that's been washed in the blood. Come out right now. Come out of there. Come out of there right now. Come out of there. Come out, all that guilt. Come out of there right now. Fight him. All you got to do is fight him and you don't have to go home depressed. It's him. It's not you. I'm not telling you to fight yourself. I'm telling you to tell the devil no right now. No witchcraft. No, stop hiding in the body. Stop hiding in the body. Stop hiding in the body making her take an offense. Stop hiding in the body. Witchcraft. Witchcraft. Stop hiding. Come out of there right now. The clarity of a preacher. Come out of there messing with this clarity of speech, clarity of proclamation of the gospel. Stop twisting it. Stop twisting the gospel. Stop twisting, making him feel that there's no love out there. You stop tormenting him, you know love spirit. In the name of the Lord Jesus, the Son of God. Thank you, Lord, for the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Come out of there. All that witchcraft has to go. Come out of there. Come out of there. Come out of there. there. Don't worry about witchcraft. Don't worry about witchcraft. Come out of there. Thank you, Lord. Just take a big breath. Go ahead. He's trying to, he's trying to hijack your free will. Just, just let him go. He's just resisting. He's holding on to your throat. I lose witchcraft. You come out swiftly. Witchcraft, start, stop throwing the fit. All your pain, come out, all your markings, all those demonic tattoos. She's not yours. She's been washing the blood. Jesus cleanses and forgives from the markings of Satan. You're trying to hold on right there. Come Were you in the new age before? You were in the new age? Okay, just say that I renounce the new age. I renounce all encounters with demonic spirits and forces. I, I am a servant of Jesus Christ, and his blood has cleansed me from this sin. You're trespassing in my life. I command you to leave me right now. In Jesus' name. There you go. Come out. You heard that, devil. Now, loose. Loose right now. Loose all that witchcraft. Come out of there right now. All that yoga, all that astrology, all that lesbianism. Come out of there right now. Come out of there. Come out. She's changed her life. Come out of there right now. Come out of there. Come out of there. He's trying. Go, 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 go. Fight him now. He'll come out that way. He'll come right out. He's right there. Come out of there right now. Fight him on out. Come on. Come on. He, he was just throwing a fit. He's trying to hold. He's trying to hold on to you. He's trying to hold on to you. There he goes. Come out of there. Now he's moving swiftly. Don't worry about witchcraft. Witchcraft tries to throw a fit. He's always throwing a fit. He's always trying to make a scene. Heavenly Father, thank you for the anointing of the Holy Ghost. For the anointing of the Holy Ghost breaks the yoke. Thank you for the anointing that breaks the yoke. Lord, you did to this man what you did to me. You gave him all that rejection from all those people. And then you gave him that porn to be his friend. You're not our friend. You came only to kill us. I'm standing in the gap for my brother just like the Lord came and rescued me. He's coming for my friend right now. Come out of there right now. Self-hatred, come out of there. You're telling him to hate himself. Come out of there right now. You're telling him to fight his mother and father. Come out of there right now. Come out of there right now. Come out of there right now. You're telling him to hate himself. You've even told him to kill himself. 
Come out of there right now. Come out of there right now. Come out of there. Suicide. Come out of there right now. Come out of there. He's came to the realization there's no pleasure in sin. Come out of there right now. There's no pleasure in sin. There's no fellowship with demons. You come out of my life. Come out of there. My mom and dad have been helping me. You told me they were my enemies. You told me to fight them. Come out of there right now. I repent of being evil to my mom and dad. Just tell the Lord, I'm so sorry for disobeying my mom and dad. I'm so sorry for treating them that way, Lord. I'm sorry for hurting you, Lord Jesus. Have mercy on me tonight. Come out of there. Come out of there. There he goes. Come out of there. Come out of there. Come out. All that lust demons. Come out. All that weed. Come out. All that weed. Come out of there right now. Come out of there right now. Come out of there. You took too much. You exposed yourself. He knows it's you now. You told him to kill himself. Come out of there right now. Come out of there. He shall live and not die. Thus said the Lord. He shall live. Come out of there. Come out of there. All the way. Come out of there. Come out of there. Come out of all that rebellion. You come out of there. All that rap. Rap. Rapping gangster. Gangster movies. Come out of there. All that thug life garbage. Come out right now. That's rebellion that ends in the grave in hell. Come out of there right now. Come out of there. Come all the way out. Come out of there. Let's go. Up and out. Up and out. In the name of Jesus, the Son of God. In the name of Jesus, the Son of God. Come out of there. Fight them. If you fight them, they all leave. Come on. You're in a real fight in the streets. You got to give it everything you got to win. Come out. You don't underestimate nobody. You give it everything when you're in a fight. Now let's go. Fight him. There you go. Come out of my body. Come off my body. You got me to watch all this evil. I'm embarrassed even at those thoughts. Come out of there. You've embarrassed me. Come out of there. I'm tired of this. Keep going. Pray for him, Mom. In the name of Jesus, today he gets free. Today he goes home different. Today he gets a touch of God. You keep going. Don't leave till I come back. Keep going. You got the anointing. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, I bind that depression spirit. I bind that depression spirit that comes upon him periodically and paralyzes him spiritually. I come against you in the name of Jesus. New depression have even assaulted God and told him if God loved you that this wouldn't happen. You did it to him and then you accuse God. You're a foul devil and you're an offense unto us. Come out right now. You're an offense unto us. Stop tormenting the man of God. Stop tormenting me in the name of Jesus. Stop taking away my sleep. Stop mulling me over and over and over with negative stories. Come out right now in the name of Jesus. Come out of there. No one will come right to you. Come out of there. Come out of there. There he goes. Come out of there. Come out of there. Grab that bucket. Don't swallow that spit. That's bitterness. Come out. You've been bitter towards yourself. Come out of there. There you go. Come out. Come out of there, you choker. All your lust demons. Come out of there right now. Come out of there mulling over that ex-girlfriend over and over. She was the root of his problem. You're a liar, devil. You're the problem. Fight him, sir. You have the anointing. Tell him you want him gone. You're an authority. You're a, you're a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. You're a servant of God. You tell him no. Take your hands off me. Use your tongue. Tell him I'll come back. Come out of there right now. Negative thought disorders. Come out of there. Negative thought disorders. Negative thought disorders. Come out of there right now. Negative thought disorders. Come out of there right now. Negative thoughts. Always negative, negative, negative all day long. You come out of there right now. Come out of there right now. Negative thought disorder. Come out of there. All your negative thoughts. Double-minded him about ministering. Double-minded him if God loves him. Double-minded him about the mercy of God. Come out of there right now. Come out of there. There he goes. Come out of there. You have no mercy, devil. You've sucked the mercy dry. Come out of there. You've made Christianity hard. It's the simplicity of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Come out of there. Keep going. You have the anointing. In the name of the Lord Jesus, stop tormenting the woman of God. All that anger. Oh, you taught her to fight when she was 12. Come out right now. You told her her identity was in the ability to fight back. Oh, that fighting spirit. We now turn it on you, devil. And we fight back in the name of the Lord. We fight for our mind and we fight for our freedom and we fight for our health. You're trying to give her this sickness. You've been trying to send her to the hospital over the last few years. I bind this sickness in Jesus' holy name. I bind the spirit of infirmity and bitterness. I command you to go. I command we shut the door on you in Jesus' holy name. Come out of there. Come out. Come out. All that fighting, fighting herself, fighting over and over and over. Come out of there. Come out. Fighting to get her health back. All this fighting. We fight you. 
we turn it on you right now and we fight in the name of Jesus Christ. We say no. We say no. Keep going. You got him. Keep going. Drive him out. Thank you, Jesus, for the Holy Ghost. Let him fight from a position of power. Oh, from a power position in faith in Christ. Thank you that every curse is broken from the gangs. Every curse is broken from every evil thing he did to people. Lord, forgive us when we hurt people. Forgive us when we hurt ourselves. Thank you for the mercy. Now use the mercy. Fight from a position of God has been merciful to you. That means he gave it to you, though you didn't deserve it. He wanted to give it to you. Come out of there right now in Jesus' name. Oh, every spirit that tries to strangle Christians. Every spirit that tries to strangle prayers. Every religious spirit that came from the forefathers. I break religious spirits. You always turn on people with religious spirits. You, you, you get them to look at specs. And then you totally turn around on them. And you judge them. You've been falsely judging someone who was judged at the cross of Calvary. You've condemned them. You've held them back. You've made them question where the love of God was, where the anointing was. I command you, take your hands off this woman of God right now. Come out of there, you terrorizing spirit. Take your depression right now and go. Come out. The man of God has the anointing. He has the anointing to help his wife get delivered. You told him not to try it. Stop doing it. You're trying to bring fighting into this marriage. You're trying to bring in questioning if he was really the man, if she was really the woman. You're a whispering little liar devil, and I expose you by the light of God, by the light of Jesus Christ. Come out of there. Come out of there. Come out of there. Stop choking him with all your evil, all that evil that came into him from the military, all the evil that came into substance abuse. Come out of there right now. Come out of there. Let her mind go. Let her mind go. Big breath. Let her mind go. All the terrors in her mind. All the terrors in her emotions. Stop terrorizing. There is peace of God. There is the love of God. Come out of there right now. Drive him on out. He'll go. He'll go. He'll go. In the name of Jesus, I break the condemning spirit. I break the voice of another. You try to mimic God. You try to emulate God. You try to masquerade as God. You're a lying, accusing devil. There is mercy and there is help in the time of need for every saint, every believer. Come out of there right now. You've got him to question even if he was, you try to tell him he was a fake. You try to question if he was even saved. It's you, devil. You're a liar. Stop lying to his mind. Stop lying to his mind and come out right now. Come out of there. Come out of there, you condemner. Come out of there. Come out of there. Stop condemning the man of God. Trying to tell him don't minister, don't love. He's sitting down right now and listening to Jesus. Come out of there. Jesus says he wins. Jesus said if he swings the fight, he wins. He delivers the knockout blow. Come out of there right now. Come out of there. Come out of my mind. Come out all the lust demons. That's you. Come out. Lust always condemns preachers. Come out of there, lust. Come out of there, you lust. Keep fighting them. Yeah, the anointing. In the name of Jesus, receive the anointing of the Holy Ghost for deliverance. Receive the anointing of the Holy Ghost for freedom. Receive the power of the Holy Spirit to fight back. Receive the grace and the mercy of God. Keep coming out. In the name of Jesus, tormentors, mental turmoil. Come out, emotional turmoil. Come out of there, tormentor. I bind the tormentor. Come out, torment. Torment, come out of there right now. Tormentor, you come out right now. Come out of there. Tormentor, you come out. Come out of there. There he goes. Get him on out. Drive him out. Come out right now. Come out of there right now. Come out. Come out of there, the slow kill weapon of Satan. Come out. Taking one day, two days, three days, four days. Taking these women away from the word of God. Taking them out of faith in the prayers that they pray. Taking them out of hope and expectation. Come out of there. You're blocking the word of God. That's who you are. You block the word of God. You block the word of God. Come out right now. Faith comes by hearing and hearing of the word of God only. You're trying to erode the faith. You're trying to get to the faith. Come out right now. Come out of there. Come out of there. Take a big breath. Let him go. Let him leave your body. You don't go home with spirits. You don't go home with spirits. Not tonight. Not tonight. Hey, what's going on, Ken? Good to see you, bro. Heavenly Father, thank you for the healing power to go through this man's heart and heal it. 
Thank you, Lord. You brought him through heart attacks, Lord. You brought him through poverty. You brought him through incarceration. And you did it so that he would be a city set on a hill, that he wouldn't be able to be hidden. Lord, he has the word of God. He has faith. And I thank you for shining on him right now and healing this body, healing him in his emotions and healing him in his inner man. Thank you for being, bringing the healing power of Jesus Christ to restore this ministry, to destroy this anointing. Lord, we forgive the daughter and her husband. We forgive all these people, these double crossers, all these ex-wives when things got bad and when there was alcohol involved. We forgive them all and we bless them all in the name of Jesus, the Son of God. And I rebuke any spirit of death Early death is, is canceled in Jesus' name. Early death is canceled. Heart attack is canceled. Continual hospital visits is canceled in the name of Jesus, the Son of God. It goes now, Ken. Keep letting it go. The healing power is coming. The healing power is coming. The healing power is coming. The healing power is here to heal you, to heal your mind to heal your mind from the negative voices, from the nitpicking voices, from the naysayers. Oh, that devil wants this woman of God to think it's everybody else getting at her. No, devil, we read the Bible. It's you getting at her. You just happen to be using those people. And we're not going to fall into that game anymore. We forgive them and we bless them all. Going all the way back to our forefathers, we bless them for everything they said, everything they did. And we come out of that curse right now. That curse is broken in the name of Jesus. Jesus Christ became the curse by hanging on the tree of Calvary so that we go free. Lord, thank you for his anointing for preaching. Thank you for the anointing of preaching. There you go. You got him. Get him. Fight him out. Hit him right between the eyes and you win. Thank you. He's called not to collect stuff, although collecting stuff is fun. Fun to find blessings. It's fun to build some stuff. He's called to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Oh, I bind this spirit that wants him looking crazy. He's not crazy. He's one of the soundest mind men I know. But you're trying to put something on him to try to get people confused about his testimony. Our testimonies aren't about what we look like. But you're trying to put something on him. You're trying to get him to push around a cart of something that he can't even use. Although he's a master of reusing things. I break that curse in Jesus' name. The curse that's holding him back. The curse that messed this leg up. The curse that made this leg swell. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. There you go. In the name of Jesus. Thank you for Sister Sandra's blessings to her, her brother. Thank you that she's always helping him. She's always loving him. She spoke him right back into life with the words of God. Thank you for the anointing in her mind for clarity. Thank you for prosperity in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Bless her. Da corre se del corra ba corre me sende de corro so do corra mara corse de que te e la corra sa taraba corra ma sande. Thank you for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Lord, the Holy Spirit comes upon those who want you. We want you tonight. We want you to be in our lives. We want the joy of the Lord to be our source of strength that we could go out and have victory. Loving people, sharing the love with people. Thank you for the blessings. Thank you for the blessings. Receive the blessings and fight from that position of blessings. Oh, I speak back to self-mutilation and self-harm, self-destruction self-destructive behaviors she is not cursed but blessed and you can't curse what the Lord has blessed in the name of Jesus the Son of God everything all that spirit of divorce I cancel it the fighting the fighting oh Fighting, fighting about things, fighting about attitudes, fighting about addictions. I break this spirit of disunity, disbelief, and distrust. And I command you, come out now. You're not going to get the marriage. Well, you know what we, we want to do. You want to get the marriage, and then you get the kid. And then you get the kid with another man, and you get that man's heart broken when he comes to the realization of what happened. So we come to the realization right now, you're trying to steal. We say no in Jesus' holy name. Come out of there right now. Come out of there. I'm saying no to this action. I'm saying no to this addiction. I'm saying no to this lifestyle and this destruction in the name of Jesus, the Son of God. Use the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Blessings. 
blessings. The anointing of Jesus Christ breaks the yoke. The anointing of Jesus Christ breaks the yoke of bondage, breaks the yoke of deception, breaks the yoke of complacency. Oh, you try to get them complacent with just getting beat down. We're not complacent with being bullied and drug around. We fight back right now in the name of the Lord Jesus. We're fighting back right now. And we stand on the blood of Jesus. We stand on the promise of Jesus Christ. He's the God of all hope. He's the God of all hope. He's the God of all truth. When I stand in truth, I get hope and I get blessings. Come out right now, you blessing stealer. Come out. All the devils that came in through pot. All the demons that came in through pot and hating people, nitpicking and fault finding. All the spirits that came in with lust. I command you to come out right now. Come out of there right now. Come out of my mind. Come out of my mind right now. Come out. to come out. I want this cloudiness in my brain to come out. I want this mind confusion to come out. I'm tired of walking around in a haze. I'm tired of around, walking around in a spiritual stupor. I break myself free from your hold in the name of Jesus Christ. Come out of there. Come out of that body. De la correction that I've called Rama Sunday, De Corrasa that I've called Kate. The word of God is a sword. Start swinging the sword. Thank you for the anointing. Thank you for the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Heavenly Father, oh, I'm praying for every streamer. Streamer, if you're still watching, I'm going to pray for you. It's your time to receive a blessing. Some of you people have been watching for years. I meet people that come that's been watching for years. And never went through deliverance. I said, oh, that's a shame. We're doing deliverance. You're not supposed to just watch deliverance. You're supposed to go through deliverance. <sighs> Heavenly Father, I pray for everybody that's watching online. I thank you for the anointing of the Holy Spirit of the living God. I thank you that the Holy Spirit of the living God breaks the yoke of slavery and bondage. We are no longer slaves but sons. I break the spiritual slave. I break the spiritual slave to Satan, always dragging these streamers around, what to watch, what to think, where to go, what to wear, who to look at, who to be with, what to expect. You're a slave master. You are a taskmaster. And when the people of God cried out to God for mercy because their taskmasters were too taxing, God came down with mercy. So the mercy is here. Satan, loose your hold in the mighty name of Jesus. Stop choking me in the nighttime. Stop stealing my sleep. Stop stealing my dreams. In the name of Jesus, the Son of God, I command you to go. Tell him to go. Streamers, tell him to go. I don't care who's next to you. Tell him to go. Everybody gets free. People into witchcraft get free. People in the new age get free. Backslidden preachers get free. Come out of my body in the name of Jesus. It is written, whom the Son sets free is free. He doesn't say we might be free, could be free. If the Lord wills, we're free. It says, whom the Son sets free is free. Jesus Christ is the one that sets at liberty those who are oppressed of the devil. Once you identify that you've been oppressed by the devil, you can now be delivered. Because you don't want it anymore. Tell the devil no in the name of Jesus. Keep going for your streamers. If anyone needs a healing, Lord, I stand in your presence and I pray for my brothers. I know what it's like to have arthritis in my shoulder and my knee. I know what it's like to have busted down, bruised body parts. I know what it's like for your body to want to quit on you and you not want to keep going because it's tough. So, Heavenly Father, I thank you. You are the Lord that healeth thee. You are God manifested in the flesh. You are our high priest who sit on the seat of mercy. So thank you, Lord, that because of mercy, we can be healed. Because of your will, we can be healed. So I pray for every brain. I pray for every mind, will, and emotions. I pray for every, every central nervous system, every body part, ligament, tendon, and muscle, and soft tissue. I pray for it all to be healed. I pray for the immune system to be healed. I pray for cancer to die in the name of Jesus. I pray for the stomach to be healed, the esophagus to be healed, the prostate to be healed, the colon to be healed, the stomach to be healed. I thank you for the healing power of Jesus Christ. If I didn't 
mention your particular uh, body part that needs healing, just speak it out to the Lord. I want to be healed, and I know you can heal me. I thank you for healing me in Jesus' holy name. Thank you for healing my body, Lord. Thank you for healing my body. Thank you, Lord. I'm swinging back now. I'm getting myself up and getting myself into prayer tomorrow morning. I'm waking up a bit earlier. I'm going to get myself going with some expectation. I'm going to go ahead and enter into God's presence with a little worship and praise. I'll make up my own song. I don't need someone to usher me into the presence of God. I'll make my own song. He gave me my own tongue and my own vocal cords. I'm going to praise you in the morning, Lord. I'm going to ask you boldly. I used to pray to you, Lord, but I was just going through vain repetitious prayers. Tomorrow, I start praying things that I want. Tomorrow, I start praying things in the scripture that you said I could have. Tomorrow, I'm going to have a hard expectation to get some answers. I want my wife back. I want my husband back. I want my children back. I want my career back. I want my creativity back. I want my... my Favor. I used to have favor. I want that favor back that everything I touch prospers. Streamers, we love you. God bless. God bless you. Thank you for coming. Everybody that's here, if you got stuck, someone will come around. They'll talk with you. You need to get a business card. Sometimes you need to talk through things. Sometimes you got 50 million things, and you need to go have a one-on-one. -on -one. You can take that business card from Lori in the bookstore. You can call that number, and you can make yourself an appointment. I want you to get that miracle list, the top one on that shelf of the 12 assignments, homework assignments. They're all biblical assignments that we need to be doing as people of God to be free and to be walking right. I want you to do that miracle list before you go to that one-on-one. -on -one. I want you to pray before you go to that one-on-one. -on -one. Thank you, Heavenly Father, everybody that's here. Lord, I pray a blessing. Sometimes you got to praise your way out. Just begin to release your tongues. Oh, Lord, I pray that tongues would come out clear. Don't leave here. Just pray a blessing on yourself. It says when you pray in tongues, you pray prayers and requests that are unknown to your natural mind, but known to God as the Spirit of God begins to make intercession on your behalf. Don't say you can't pray in tongues. Yield your tongue. Surrender your tongue. Give it to God. He said when you ask for the Holy Spirit, you get the Holy Spirit. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you and good night. Brother Mike, back tomorrow. Same time, same channel. Hey, Ken, come on back to my office. I'd like to talk to you. If anybody needs to talk to me, I'll be in my office. God bless you.